with with Trump, a lot of this stuff feels nakedly and brazenly opportunistic. Makes sense to me. Um, now, this is the big one. I'd love to hear your opinion on this one. The border policy. Okay. Who do you think uh, got the better border policy between those two? Well, the important thing to understand is that Trump's border policy isn't completely clear. I mean, I'll tell you the parts that are clear. David Pakman recently appeared on right-wing commentator Sean Kelly's show for a debate. And as usual, David handled it like a pro. He's always solid in these kinds of debates, whether it's with right-wingers or anyone else, so this one was pretty entertaining. There's definitely some interesting moments and real substance here. We're going to dive into the debate between David Pakman and Sean Kelly, and I'll jump in with my thoughts throughout. Let's get into it. He wants to build a wall across the entire U.S.-Mexico border, which you can't actually do. You can only do it in certain parts because there's other types of barriers, including water and different things. I don't think Trump knows. I don't think Trump cares, but he says we're going to build a wall across the entire thing. And maybe Mexico will pay for it. That was part of it yeah. in 2016. Uh, he failed to do it. You can't do it in a presidential term. You're not going to get Mexico to pay for it. And it's not really going to deal with the broader issue, which is people that are flying in and overstaying visas, people being smuggled in or coming in legally and staying through legal ports of entry, et cetera. So right. he wants to build this wall. He's not going to build the wall and it wouldn't actually solve the problem. Trump wants to do militarized mass deportations. When he's asked who would be included in that, sometimes he'll say, well, the criminal illegal aliens who have committed violent crimes. OK, we already do that. Yeah. Sometimes they have to serve time here first, then they get deported. We already have that in place. So then you asked Trump, well, what about those who came here as minors because they were brought by their parents before they legally had any say? Someone came here when they were two, three, four, five, six. Now they're 20. They have no connection to their birth country. Mm. They speak English. They've gone to college here, et cetera. You're going to deport them? Not a clear answer. That's a real problem for me. The mm. answer should be clear. We're not going to deport them. Of course not. Trump's asked, what about, you know, mothers? Will mothers be separated from their babies and put into these militarized deportation camps? Trump says, you know, that's a tough one because I'll get bad press if I do that rather than saying, of course, we're not going to do that. Of course, we're not going to do that. So my view on this is I am not for an open border. I don't believe we have one. I think countries have a right to enforce their borders. Mm. If people are here illegally and they don't have any legal status, they're subject to deportation. That it's, it's the name yeah. of the game. Do so you agree with that? With people who are here illegally being deported? Yeah. As a general principle, that's absolutely the way every country functions. I also think, we have a bunch of industries that thanks to big, big agriculture and for other reasons, industries that are dependent on migrant labor. I've not heard Trump articulate if you deport all those folks who are, they're just here working. Yes, mm -hmm. they're here illegally, but they've committed no other crime and they're just here working. What do you do about those industries? What David Pakman is saying here makes a lot of sense, and it's hard to argue against the reasonable stance he's putting forward. On the other hand, you have some right-wing MAGA supporters who seem to favor extreme measures at the border. Anything short of extreme policies like building a moat with alligators won't satisfy them. But David Pakman is offering a balanced and thoughtful approach, especially when it comes to issues like immigration and legalization. Take Kamala Harris, for example. David mentions how her campaign could really benefit from leaning into the issue of legalization, as two-thirds of the country supports it. This could be a great way to energize younger voters, but Harris's team seems to be playing it too safe with a centrist approach, which might be a missed opportunity. Then there's the topic of deportation. Trump and J.D. Vance talk about deporting 25 million people, but as David points out, there aren't even 25 million undocumented immigrants in the country. And what about those who were brought here as kids and have grown up in the U.S.? Forcing them back to places they barely know would be disastrous. And we saw that under the Trump administration with people being sent to countries they hadn't lived in since they were babies. You also get these stories where someone in a small town is deported and the locals say, wait, I didn't mean him. He's one of the good ones. This disconnect highlights the problem with Trump and Vance's plan. Mass deportations on that scale would create chaos and heartache for families across the country. This is just one of the many reasons why, as Pacman explains, another Trump term would be a disaster. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Do that as part See, of the See, a lot exercise. of people won't dive into these details. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Do you agree with that? Oh, yeah. 
I feel like the average voter isn't going to look up articles and like dive into stuff. Well, you're right to some degree, and it's a very sad state of affairs. <laughs> but your audience is very educated, obviously. I think they'll appreciate hearing that from you. No, I've seen your videos. <laughs> I, I read your comments, and you know, Thank it's, you. it's a high level crowd. I appreciate that. Yeah, is it is it mainly people on the left? My yeah, I, I we have a ton of right wing attack trolls in the comments on every one of my platforms, but yeah. I do a left wing show. I think it's safe to say that the majority of my audience is on the left, yeah. How do you deal with those trolls and the haters? Just ignore them. You ignore them? Yeah. I mean, they can call in and argue with me sometimes and they'll do it and I'll listen to what they have to say. <laughs> it's interesting. Yeah. It's an interesting experiment. <laughs> it's not productive when you're just hating on It's not super productive, but sometimes we'll make a breakthrough. Like there'll be conversations like we had where someone will call in and will say, the stock market's been terrible under Biden. And mm. I go, oh, really? All right, well, look up. Where was the Dow when Biden took over? And where is the Dow now? And then they go, oh, wow, I guess it's not that bad. David Pakman is definitely one of the most reasonable voices in online punditry. And this latest debate with Sean Kelly really highlights that. By the end, you can even see how David's use of facts and data starts to win Sean Kelly over, which is refreshing compared to the typical debates we see with MAGA supporters who often rely on conspiracy theories. In this conversation, David Pakman stays grounded presenting logical points, while Kelly, who seemed more skeptical at first, gradually shifts his stance. It's a great example of how real discussions can lead to progress, unlike what we often see in more extreme media outlets. What do you think about the points David Pakman made in this debate? You can check out the full discussion on David Pakman's YouTube channel. It's about 50 minutes long and packed with great insights. I focused on a couple of key moments, but there's so much more. Share your thoughts on David Sean Kelly, the upcoming election, or anything else in the comments. And don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.